Now, understandably, whenever you see Roman Reigns on SmackDown, you want to acknowledge him as the tribal chief. You want to be on the island of relevancy. You want to say, hey, even if the rest of the show sucks, at least I know the stuff involving Roman is going to be pretty good. And it usually is. Yes, indeed it is. And even like some of the sub stuff off that comes and spins off of Roman Reigns is really good. Like the interactions between Paul Heyman and Kayla Braxton. Like these are the things you don't know you need, but you absolutely, absolutely do. Like she's going to be talking about rumors. She better come with some confirmations and some, you know, acknowledgements or denials or something. But part of the problem with SmackDown right now to me is Roman's great. We all know that I'm a huge tribal chief stan. But you have to have more. One man, one story cannot carry a show no matter how great he is. And so much of the rest of SmackDown again this week was just total ass cheeks. Like if even if you just, if you went and you didn't watch this show, but you instead read it online somewhere on one of the wrestling websites or the dirt sheets and you did kind of like where they do the match by match recap and they do the nerd write up of the different moves in the match and shit. Like if you read this, you would have no interest. Absolutely none. And why would you? Because it was just ridiculous. After the opening segment involving the tribal chief, Paul Heyman and Kayla Braxton, you come back with a tag match. It's Jeff Hardy and Drew McIntyre versus Mad Cat Moss and Happy Corbin. And here's a perfect example. Happy Corbin. We still want broke Baron Corbin. We still want bum-ass Baron Corbin. Because that was a character that people could relate to. That was a character that people would under, could understand. Not only is that kind of down and out storyline always applicable and always able to work, when you look at the number of people that were economically impacted by the COVID pandemic over the past year and a half plus, it was more timely and relevant than it had been at any point in time in the last decade. Like here was a chance to really go somewhere. Here was a chance to tell a different type of story. Here was a chance to take somebody and make them into a star that people could really get behind and really connect. And the WWE just fucking refused. Instead, they got to SummerSlam, lost their patience and said, fuck this, we're gonna do the opposite because we're fucking idiots, because we let an old man like Vince McMahon be too heavily involved in the day-to-day -day operations and nobody has the balls and the courage to tell him, he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing anymore. And he ruins a character. And now, what happens when you see Happy Corbin? You don't give a fuck. You don't. Like, I mean, this match was okay. And, you know, obviously Jeff Hardy was really over with the Carolina crowd. And he comes in and hits the Swanton and gets the win. Like, that was good stuff. But, who gives a fuck? One thing I'll give credit to Cesaro and Ridge Holland for is they didn't have Ridge Holland win this debut match. I actually like the fact that you don't always have the new person come in and win right away. Now, it still seems kind of weird that, you know, several months back you had Cesaro in a somewhat relevant and important spot, and now he's an afterthought. Even though he won the match, he's an afterthought. And see, this is why... Fans don't get engaged in the WWE talents, which is how WWE wants it, which is fucking stupid. This is why people don't engage, get engaged and invested in what you're doing. Because you take somebody from a featured storyline at WrestleMania, and you either release them like you did with the Jomo, or you put them in a spot here with Cesaro, where he's just sitting there and being used as a plot device for Ridge Holland and Sheamus. Like, that type of shit can't happen. It just can't. And yet it does over and over and over again. And then you have Rick Boogs versus Angel Garza. Who gives a fuck? Okay, Pat McAfee's gonna jam out to Boogs. Okay, that's great. And then what? 
If I wanted to see the musical act, just give me fucking Elias to begin with. You know? Or you could have made a band. Could have put Elias and Boobs together and maybe found one more and made yourself a three-man band? <laughs> no, but I mean, fuck. Gives a shit about any of this. Really? Charlotte Flair. Oh, God, somebody gave her a fucking microphone. That's going to turn out well. And, of course, they're trying to put her in a position, it seems like, where they want Charlotte Flair to, Flair to be cheered. There's nothing to cheer this botchy bitch for. Stop it. And then you wonder why new talents don't get over. You wonder why people don't give a shit about the talents you have. You bring out Tony Storm, who, of course, you've already changed her fucking look. She had been doing this look and gimmick of the 80s kind of rocker for so damn long down in NXT. Now you've changed some of that shit up, and it's not the same because you're stupid, because you try to undercut your own shit just to please Vince's ego. Just fucking dumb, you bunch of cut, gutless fucking cowards that surround Vince. Now you have Tony Storm come out and confront Charlotte Flair just to take a pie in the face. Not once, but twice. And in that process, she just stands there and looks like a bitch. She got bitched out. Why in the fuck would I want to see Tony Storm face Charlotte Flair now? Somebody throws a pie in your face not once but twice and you're just going to fucking stand there and take it? How is that engaging? How is that relatable for the audience? How does that do anything other than make Tony Storm's character look like a complete fucking puss? Why in the hell would people want to cheer for that? I mean, seriously. It's bad enough that you put the female Orton at a top position in your damn women's division. Like, I mean, come on. You want to talk about most overrated wrestlers of all time. Charlotte Flair is at the top of the list. There are two types of wrestling. Those that have taste and those that like Charlotte Flair. Oh yeah, I said it. Because you know I'm right. Because you know it's true. Her promos are bad. Every time she's out, she comes back. She's got another plastic surgery. So you don't even know what the hell she looks like half the damn time. She looks stupid. Fucking matches are trash. All botchy and sloppy and shit. But yet you love it. Whatever. But that said, you can't even blame Charlotte for this shit. As easy it would be to want to do that. I mean, they just made Tony Storm look fucking stupid. And even when you think about looking stupid like... Having Naomi and Sasha Banks together is actually kind of stupid in and of itself, too. Why would Sasha Banks all of a sudden be standing for Naomi? And why the fuck would she be caring about what's happening with Naomi? And why is the thing with Naomi and Sonya Deville still a thing? There's no payoff here. I mean, seriously. There's no goddamn payoff. Wouldn't Sasha be wanting to go after the fucking title? Why would she care about what Naomi's doing? Why would Naomi want to align herself with Sasha? She never watched the damn show? Again, all of this shit is stupid, but that wasn't even the creme de la crap of this week's show. It's the Black Friday Battle Royal, where the winner gets a title shot against Roman Reigns, which is probably about the only way you can do it right now. Because you're lacking incredible challengers, which is a problem. I will totally concur and agree with that. But for some particular reason, you had Drew McIntyre be excluded from the damn match. So he could come out and fucking wave around the sword and imagine being told, hey, you gotta duck him swinging the sword. Like, that's a risky, dangerous spot. But goddamn, seriously, man. You sat there and didn't put one of the peach people that you most prominently feature into this spot. That makes no goddamn sense at all. Why would we be doing this? Why? Now, I was sitting there and assuming that since Jeff Hardy was in this match, the crowd is really behind him, and you can hear it. You can hear the pops. You have to validate that. You have to go with that. 
You need to give a viable, credible, star-level feeling opponent for Roman Reigns. You say to yourself, okay, you know what? In that bridge time between now and Brock Lesnar, somebody else you could throw out there so you could save Brock for a little bit. Jeff Hardy would work. Fans like Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy has star power. He has presence. You know he could go out there and have some banger matches with Roman. The storytelling dynamics are there. Like, yes, it's kind of a shaky thing of, do you reward the guy that's had all these substance abuse problems? It is what it is at this point. But at the end of the day, man, like, it's so fucking obvious what's the right thing to do. So, you know, Vince McMahon is sure as hell not about to sit there and take that and do that. You know, you set up the whole thing like Jeff Hardy's won and then, oh yeah, that's right, Sami Zayn was never eliminated. So then we're going to have Sami Zayn come out and he's going to fuck it. Just continue the whole thing of you're not going to have the hometown talent win in their home city or their home state or anything like that because why would you want the people to be happy? Let's have Sami Zayn win it. Well, and then in that particular case, we're not just going to end it there. We're going to interrupt that so that way we can make a big fucking announcement that Brock Lesnar's suspension is lifted and he'll be back next week. So you went from what felt like the obvious feel-good finish for everybody involved, which is Jeff Hardy winning, to Zami Zayn wins, but only to be undercut by Brock Lesnar. And you can imagine this is not going to go very fucking well. Who books this shit? Well, you know who books this shit, but seriously, who books this shit? You take the layup, almost slam dunk finish here, and you over convoluted and over complicated to the nth fucking degree. If that isn't Vince McMahon, I don't know what the hell is. Unbelievable. Like, you could have had people feeling really good about the finish. You could have done the same shit with Jeff Hardy and announced that Brock Lesnar was back. You could have just done the same shit with Jeff Hardy and not done anything yet with Brock Lesnar because maybe you didn't need to. Whatever, man. SmackDown was a hard pass this week. That 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 finish to that battle royal was like tells you everything you need to know about the state of the WWE product right now. <laughs> Take the layup, obvious. Make everybody happy for the most part finish and do the exact opposite and complicate it to all fucking hell.